Welcome back to my tutorial series on creating a data science blog. If you haven't already, check out part one of the series where I show you how to get your website up and running. In this video, we're going to cover how to add blog posts to our site in a few different ways. I'll show you how to create posts manually, then from Jupyter Notebooks, then from RStudio, and finally how to embed interactive visualizations into your pages. But before we get started, let's talk about how posts work in Jekyll. They can either be HTML or Markdown documents, and the file name must follow a specific convention with the date first and then the title. Also, if the date in the file name is after today's date, it actually won't show up on your website. It'll only appear live after that date. So let's get started. We're first going to run our Jekyll server again. So bundle exec Jekyll serve. And once it starts running, we can go ahead and open up our server and just take a look at our website. So we'll go over to posts and you see that we have all these posts here that mirror the posts that are in our folder here. So I'm actually going to get rid of these. I'm going to get rid of all but one of them for now, just so we have one we can reference. Um, but I also don't want this to still show up on our website. So I'm going to create a new folder called drafts, and then I'm going to move this file into there. Any of your posts that's underneath this drafts folder won't actually show up on your website. Additionally, a lot of those posts had images that are all contained within this image folder. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of those. Great, so now if we go back to our site and refresh, we should have no posts, which is exactly what I want. So let's start with making our first blog post. So as I mentioned before, we can either make an HTML or a Markdown file, but I'm gonna stick with Markdown because they're more readable, easier to write, and they still do support HTML snippets. But if you're unfamiliar with Markdown or just want a refresher on the syntax, check out the Markdown guide over here, but it's pretty easy to follow. So to make our new post, we're just going to go back to our post folder, make a new file. And then for the file name, again, we have to follow that specific naming convention with the year dash month dash day, and then whatever arbitrary title we want. I'm going to make this post about web scraping. So I'm just going to call it web scraping and then dot MD for markdown. Now for Jekyll to know that this is a post and then appropriately format our data for the website, we need to add the YAML front matter at the top. So I'm going to go back to this file that I put in drafts and just copy this just so we know what we need to add. So I'm going to keep the layout post. For title, this is going to be about uh, web scraping in R. For the subtitle, I'm just going to make it scraping movie data from IMDB with R vest package. I'm actually going to remove this date from here because I'm not sure if it even shows up on the website anywhere. And then for background, I'm going to replace this later, but this is the big banner that shows up behind our title of our post. All right, so now we've got our YAML front matter in, I'm going to add the actual content of our post just underneath. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste this in. There isn't too much going on here. It's mostly just headers, some code snippets, some links. So we're going to save it and just take a look at our website. So let's refresh. We see web scraping in R. Again, we haven't set that background yet. So right now this is just a gray box and I see that we have one broken image link, so let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm actually going to remove this image link. And the basic syntax for adding images in Markdown, you need to have an exclamation mark, and then in brackets, the alt text, and then in parentheses, the link to that image. But this is the image that I want to embed into my post. So what I'm going to do is go to my image posts, and then I'm actually going to make a new folder called web scraping. And for each of my posts, I'm actually going to have a new folder just so I can keep all of the images for that post in separate folders and not just in one big directory. But then I'll just drag that same image into that folder. And now I just need to copy the relative path and paste it. And I will actually need to add a slash here so it goes into the image folder. But once I save that and go back, refresh, I should see it. The only issue is that it's way wider and bigger than I need it to be. But we can fix this with some really basic CSS. So I'm going to go into our assets folder, into vendor, to our SCSS files. And from the template, there is a CSS file for post. And this is pretty simple. I'm just going to add an image tag and make the width 100%. I can save that, go back to our site and refresh. And now our image actually fits within our content and looks a lot better. The last thing I'm going to do is just add the background image for our post. So I'll go back to web scraping. I've got another image that I'm going to drag into that same folder. We're going to copy the relative path and then paste it in our background. And again, we have to add that slash here so it knows to go into our image folder. We can save it and we'll go back to our site, refresh, and you see that it shows up right there. So that wasn't too difficult, but what if we had, let's say, a Jupyter notebook with a Python project and want to make that into a blog post? 
Well, here I've got a Jupyter Notebook that I found online. I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, I actually deleted a lot of the code just to make it a bit simpler, but you can see we have a visualization down here and some other code snippets, headers, write-up, etc. But once we're in our notebook, all we need to do is go to File, Download as, Markdown, and it'll actually create a zip file that we can open up. And that zip file is going to contain the main markdown file and then any kind of image or figures that were part of that notebook. So we're going to go back to VS Code and I'm going to drag census.md into posts. Now we just need to do a couple things that we did before. First is renaming it to fit that same naming convention. So I'll call this 2021-01 and we're just going to date this for yesterday assuming that I wrote this post yesterday and now we just need to add that YAML front matter so we're going to copy that over from here we'll change up the title to US census data visualizing the US population now we'll still need to set a background and we'll also need to fix the link for this image at the very bottom but that isn't too difficult since we just did that so I'm going to go back to our image folder and posts and make a new folder called census. I'm gonna drag in that one image of our Jupyter Notebook output. And then I've also got this background image for our post that I'm gonna drag in as well. I'll copy that relative path, go back to our post and paste it in, make sure I add the slash. And then I'll do the same with our figure. So paste our relative path and add the slash. We can save this, we can open up our link again, and we see our new post, and our image works. Great. So what if you're in R Studio and you're working with an R notebook? It's again pretty straightforward. You will need to install the R Markdown package, so install that package's R Markdown. And then when you're creating your file, you'll want to create a new R Markdown from template and use GitHub document Markdown and make sure that the output is GitHub document. But I'm gonna close this and open up a file that I just recently worked on. So what's interesting here is I actually have an R notebook that uses an interactive plotly graph. And if you wanna know how to do this, I actually have a video on making interactive maps that I'd recommend checking out. But anyway, I'm gonna click run and just run all of these cells. And you can see this is what the output of our graph looks like. But if we wanna get this embedded into our post, it's actually not too difficult. Here where we're displaying the graph, Instead, what we need to do is we need to create a new line and use the HTML widgets package. And we're gonna call the save widget command with as widget function. We're gonna pass in the name of our graph and then what we wanna name the file. And I'm just gonna name it minwagegraph.html. And then I can delete this line and I'll save it. So now we can knit our document and it just shows us a preview of our markdown file. So we'll close out of it. But in our folder, we should see three files, the original R markdown file, a normal markdown file, and then that HTML file, along with any other figures or images that you would have knitted. So we're gonna follow the same steps that we did before to get our markdown as a post. So we'll drag in our markdown to our post folder. We'll rename it. I'm gonna call this interactive maps. We need to add our YAML front matter. So let's copy it, put it in here. We'll call this interactive maps in R, creating interactive maps with a plotly package. And then we'll make a new folder for our post called interactive maps. We'll put our minwagegraph.html in there, just like we would do if it was an image. And I'm also going to put this other image that I found online of this cool map. We'll go back to our post, copy the relative path for our background. We're also going to copy the relative path of our HTML. And this is where we want it to be displayed. So I'm actually gonna remove this R code snippet right here. And instead of just doing a standard image, we actually have to embed some HTML code. So we're gonna use the iframe tag and our source is gonna be that relative URL. But again, we need to have the slash before it and then we can close the iframe at the end. So if we save this, we can take a look at our website. Refresh, let's go back to our posts, interactive maps in R and we get kind of a really small squished graph. Can't really see any of the data. So we're actually gonna go back here. Oh, I realize that I can also remove these warnings. Um, but we're gonna go back here into our HTML tag and we're gonna make the height 800 pixels and the width, we're just gonna make it 100%. We'll go back, refresh, and you see that we do get our embedded map now and it works perfectly. And you can essentially do this with any kind of interactive HTML figure in your blog. So the last thing we need to do just to get our changes to show up live on our real website is go ahead and commit them. I'll just write a commit message, added posts. Yes. And then we need to push our changes down here. 
And once it's done being pushed, once you refresh your GitHub repo, you'll see that it has our newest commit. But once we go to dataslice.github.io, it should take a second for the post to actually show up. But I'm gonna refresh, and you see that we now have our changes. We have our new posts with both the images and the interactive components all working. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. In the next video, we're gonna go into more further customizations and really how to make your website your own. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.